What's going on guys? So I know it's been a long time since I posted a video so I feel like it'd be a really good time to um, post this these clips that I got about a month ago about uh, the S13 and I go over a little bit on what happened the weekend that we crashed and I go over some of the stuff that we're gonna do and talk a little bit about the plan for next year for uh, Formula Drift Pro 2. So definitely excited about next year. Uh, I know that a lot of you guys had questions about the S13 chassis and what we're planning on doing with it and I really haven't shed any light on what we plan on doing with it other than talking to local friends and stuff like that so I felt like it'd be a good video to post so we're just gonna go back to the clips that I got a month ago and uh, should explain a little bit of what we got going on what's going on guys I know it's been a hot minute since I've been on a video especially one for YouTube uh, but I think today's a good day to talk about my little broken 240 here and uh, what we plan to do with it and uh, what we plan to do for Formula Drift Pro 2 2020 next year. Super pumped. So I'll give you a little rundown of the car really quick to show you what happened. I'm also going to, uh, before actually, before I get into it, let's show you a video of what happened and how this car ended up like this. So run the clip. <laughs> Uh, that happened. It was not very fun. Um, I was really lucky that I put a, a lot of uh, time into safety and stuff like that. And I really didn't feel sore after the crash or anything along those lines. Um, I felt fine. I was uh, pretty bummed out about the the car hitting the wall. Uh, we were doing really good that day, and I was I was positive we were going to get on the podium. Um, but I took myself out. Um, you know. It happens, can't beat yourself up too much about it, but you know, it was a good uh, learning experience uh, now that I know how to crash. So <laughs> now I wanna learn how to actually slide my car against the wall without having to crash the front of the car. But um, yeah, so let's give you a little bit of a walk around the car and we'll show you what I banged up. <laughs> Mainly it was all front right side damage, but unfortunately since um, We hit the wall pretty hard and the wall actually hit the frame rail here it um, Pushed this so it ended up taking out that side. If I show you close here You can see that's separated at the spot weld And the frame starting to separate while well, the uh, lower core support is starting to separate but um lower rad support that's what that is um but yeah so i mean it's pretty crazy how well this bash bar is held up it just i mean no welds are cracked you know some paint flew off but that's about it it's pretty cool i definitely hit the wall in a weird spot where it was more like i'm pretty sure i hit it right here actually so you can kind of see where everything got taken out like my intercooler got hit this got squished. Um, I'm really hoping that nothing like broke motor wise because um, a lot of the stuff is solid mounted on this car and so I was kind of worried that since we crashed it, since things are solid mounted and things like get tweaked up like that, I don't want like mounts breaking off of stuff. And, you know, just good parts going to waste when we can just continue to use them, you know, so. Hoping for the best, we are gonna take the motor out of this, but I'll get, I'll touch back on that in a second. We'll show you a little bit more what, uh, what happened. So, let's go to the back here. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy that the car's in decent shape. I mean, I crashed it and it's pretty banged up, but it is fixable. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that because I love this car and I do want to fix it, um, but. I don't believe we will be using it for uh, Pro 2 next year. But I'll elaborate on that a little bit more in just a second. We're now coming to the back here. Um, I believe we, this made contact first right here along with my wing that hangs off the trunk uh, right here. So I believe 
This area is where we hit the wall first. I kind of heard it before I felt it. So definitely had this all this on the wall first. And then you can see a little bit farther back, we have the bash bar here. And it's nice and flattened out from me hitting the wall. So I think the ultimate thing was like, this is pretty beefy, you know, and it doesn't have like any relief cuts under it. It's not like super thin wall metal. So it, it didn't really want to crush super simple. Like it didn't want to crush super easily. So what ended up happening was um, I knew I was going to put it in the wall on the back of the car, not the front of the car, but I knew I was going to uh, tap the wall. So I just remember what everyone always told me. Either you just floor it, clutch kick it, try to steer away from the wall. Um, <clears throat> I definitely did not steer away from the wall. I kept it at lock because I thought that I was just gonna drag the wall and then I'll just stay on my line for the rest of the run and that should have been it. Um, but so knowing that I was gonna hit the wall, I just kept it floored. I kept it floored. Um, but to be completely honest with you, once I felt how hard it hit in the back, cause I felt it like the f initial like touch of the wall. I felt that and I was like, okay. Then once I felt that bash bar hit the wall, it almost like shocked me, which is something that I guess like, I'm glad that it happened because now like if I know I'm ever gonna go into a wall again, I need to just either try and pay attention more, just stay focused or just remember a simple task like just either steer away from the wall or clutch kick it or just stay on throttle because the thing is what happened was once once the bash bar hit the wall um the car slowed down so i don't know if it was a combination of me freaking out maybe and taking my foot off the gas or uh just how hard i hit it and it slowed the car down enough where it gripped up we did have a lot of grip that day so it it is possible but um we could have hit the wall it had gripped up and i didn't steer away from the wall so basically just counter steered me right into the wall um so it wasn't a horrible hit <clears throat> i was really flustered with emotions after i hit the wall just because we've worked really hard on this car but you know that's that's part of the game you got to be able to put constant hours hard work blood sweat money tears and you gotta not care if you crash it you could care because it's going to be a lot of work to fix it but it's part of the game you got to be willing to put the chassis on the line to try and win and that's what i was willing to do that day so um i mean all in all good experience uh definitely not the way i wanted to end our season this year but um i definitely have learned something from it so i'll take that as a positive so i can say that i didn't end the year on a negative but um yeah so along with that you can't really tell but so that bash bar is really bent in not really bent in but like just here and then here like this main bar that goes all the way to the frame rail is bent in a little bit luckily it didn't take out any of the components back here so that's cool so um that's really all the damage so that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm glad that it's fixable. It is very fixable, but here's my problem with this. So this chassis is a lot older too. It's an 89 and there are some things, it's got the normal wear and tear if you were gonna drift the car for four years straight. And um, this car has seen so many like revisions to its like actual form with fabrication wise and all these things and uh, you know, it's coming down to the point where if I do another revision where um, I wouldn't change the front much, I would just fix it, uh, fix the, the frame rails and all that stuff. But the back, I would revise that because it wasn't built to properly slide against a wall. I would like to have some crush room so that if I ever do again, go into a wall with the back of the car, it will smush a little bit and it won't, it won't uh, affect my line or grip or slow me down. You know, I could just slide right through it and just keep going. So that's a lot of things that I've been seeing on builds like newer and like what stuff, like what pros are driving now today. They have like a lot of crush room or they have bash bars that will crush with the wall or move with the wall. So that's something I definitely want to do for Pro 2 next year since there are tracks that are like ovals and the high line is judged a lot better than being mid to low line. So 
I would I want to feel more comfortable getting in that somewhat sketchy area where like I'm not used to being so close to the wall and then like be scared about crashing. Now I, I want to get comfortable on the wall, you know, because that's that's something you see a lot in like FD and professional drifting, just uh, really people putting it right in the clips, right in the walls, all the outer zones. So we want to be able to do that next year. So that being said, I'm going to get a new chassis. It is an S chassis and it's actually showing up today. Um, we're not going to look at it uh, just because it's really not that important. Just another S chassis. Um, but I just want to explain why I feel like it's beneficial for us to move into another chassis. I mean, one, it's not the smartest move because it is a lot of work and it'll be a new chassis. So there's sometimes you run into issues. So our main goal is getting it as soon as possible so we can build that thing up and do a bunch of testing before FD starts. But I'm not too worried because it's another S chassis. So I, I'm really comfortable with them and I'm, I'm not too worried about getting comfortable with it because all the components out of this are going to go into that. So um, there's going to be a couple minor changes here and there, just upgrading things for the better, um, swapping out some worn out parts that just need to be replaced. Um, but I feel like it's really, I feel like it's a good idea because this thing, I love this car. I've had this car forever. And if we do a, a like pro two with it, I, I have to be able to not care about crashing it. I have to be able to put everything on the line so that I can try and beat whoever I'm going against. So I don't want to feel bad about crashing it because it was my first car. And like, like when I crashed it at, um, in Ohio, you know, I was, I was kind of emotional just because it's the car that got me into it. But that's, that's part of the game, as I was saying before, and I'm also really grateful for everything that this has taught me. So the memories are almost just as good as being able to stand right next to it, stare at it when it's a full car, not crash, things like that. But I would like to keep it and fix it up and make a demo car out of it or like a nice car for going to the track and just having fun or practicing, maybe keeping it similar to our Pro 2 car so that we don't have to put the Pro 2 car out all the time and wear it out and we could just keep driving this thing and just get good seat time. So I feel like that's really smart for us. Um, and also the time and the money that was gonna go into this to fix it up, um, I think would be smart to go into another chassis just because it'll be less worn out, less tired, you know, it's something that you feel good about putting the money into because you could crash it once and it's just only a little tired after that. You know, you could keep on fixing it like we were doing with this. So, you know, it's something, it's like, it's weird. Like, I don't know exactly how I feel about it just because I'm excited for next year. Um, I'm also just a little nervous just because, you know, it's gonna be a lot of work again this winter and I was really hoping to just, uh, you know, just clean this thing off and then <laughs> go to Pro 2. But, you know, I'm happy with the decision that I made and I think everyone else will agree with me. Some people might not, that's okay though, because I've talked to a lot of people, they told me just fix the car, drive it Pro 2, like you're gonna want, you're not gonna wanna care about it and like crash it, cause that's gonna happen. So, again, that's just, that's something I'm not worried about with the new chassis that we're getting, cause I have no connection to it. It's just a car that's built for a purpose and we're just going to try and win as many events as we can and just do as good as we can and then just keep running it for years. You know, that's, that's the original plan. This car, I mean, I didn't really care, but after crashing, I kind of cared a little bit. And now that the opportunity to have another chassis is there, I feel like it's really cool that I can just keep this. And also I kind of want to teach myself how to, how to fabricate more. So I think it's a really good idea for me to get some skills behind a welder and fabricating metal by taking on this chassis when we get everything off of it and trying to fix it. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, we're going to take the motor out of this. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to put like a stock one J maybe bigger turbo or something just so it's not like slow. I don't know, but anybody yell at me because they want me to keep it stock. But, uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing. Um, if you guys have any questions, put them in the comments below. You guys could also hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, whatever you want. So subscribe to my channel and maybe who knows, we'll see the new chassis or not. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but 
we'll find out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's super simple, straight to the point. Um, I hope it answers some of the questions that uh, a lot of you had for me. And I really look forward to what we have in store for next year. Um, I plan on letting you guys know what we're working with soon. We're just figuring out a lot of stuff with it right now. And it's in the beginning stages of being built. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a really great car. So I'm super excited. So make sure you, you subscribe and like the video, like I said before. Um, also, drop me comments, as I was saying. You could also hit me up, Mike Power Drift, on Instagram. And whatever you want. You can ask me questions all the time. But also, if you're interested, we do have some new merch. I'm wearing one of our new hoodies that we got on our new website, PowerRacingUSA.com. So if you want, check that out. I'll put the link in the description of this video so you can check it out if you want. That totally helps us out all season long with some extra cash that we use for the car and consumables that uh, we use a lot. So really appreciate any orders that we get. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it answered some questions and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys.